Alright guys, here we are. We are in the room where we use the boutique key. And unfortunately as Chris, we did not get the infinite ammo Colt Python. But we did have to go and get the bloody armor key, which was a pain in the ass. And this guy here on the floor, he took 10 bullets. Yeah. So anyway, let's go and check out what extra costumes we have, shall we? First time I've actually seen these. Interesting. Old clothes. There's one outfit that fits you perfectly. Will you change your outfit? Just a moment, please. Okay, let's see the finished result. Huh, that's kinda cool. Leather jacket sort of thing. What does it say on the back? Made in... Made in heaven. Ah, now I think. Doesn't Claire Redfield have a similar jacket? I think hers, yeah, hers is black though. That's interesting. Let's see if there's any more. So the one we had was from there. Old clothes, old clothes, old clothes. So I'm assuming there's only one costume. Oh. You can't change back, can you? That's, uh... That's interesting. Nope, doesn't look like it. Well, let's get one last good look at Chris in front of the mirror. And then I'll do a jump cut to Jill's alternate costumes. I quite like that jacket. Made in heaven with an angel. Yes, much like her sister. I do like the original costume though. So there's nothing in these changing rooms. Okay, well, there was Jill's, um, oh not Jill's, there was Chris's alternate costume. And now let's go and have a look at Jill's. And here we are with Jill Valentine. Now just as a side note, this zombie only took 5 bullets this time compared to the 10 it took with Chris. As you can see, we have the infinite ammo rocket launcher. What a beautiful weapon. One shot can destroy any target. I forget what it's based off, but it's, uh, it's based off an American rocket launcher. Uh, I think it's called like the M82. I could definitely be wrong about that. Anyway, let's go and see what uh, Jill Valentine's alternate costume is. Just check everywhere else in the room first, in case she actually gets two. Old clothes, old clothes, old clothes. There's one outfit that fits you perfectly, hold on. If I check this. Ah, she might actually get two. Let's see. Just a moment, please. I can imagine if that was Barry, like, watching the change. Just a moment! You know, like when he says in the hole.
That looks absolutely bloody horrendous. I'm sorry, but that looks flipping awful. Surely she's got another costume, surely. Please tell me she's got another costume. Oh god. No, well, I guess that's it. Oh well, we might as well go and uh, run about a bit of her. I left a zombie just outside the room so you can see what the rocket launcher works like on zombies. See, I am pretty considerate. You can't aim up or down with it, otherwise I would have shown you the crawling zombie in the changing room we were just in. But here's a good view. Three, two, one. Yeah, pretty much blows them to bits. Anyway, I have not forgot about discussing the canon Resident Evil 1 story. So I'm gonna read out what's generally accepted on the Resident Evil wiki. It sounds right to me anyway, but apparently in Resident Evil 1, Chris's scenario contains the most canon elements, though it's true that both Jill and Chris search a mansion independently, which is confirmed in Resident Evil 5. Chris's scenario was used as the basis for the mansion incident stage in Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles, in which Rebecca Chambers is present and escapes in Chris's best ending, Chris, Jill and Rebecca. Rebecca does not appear in Jill's scenario at any time, while the prequel, Resident Evil Zero, specifically foreshadows her presence in Resident Evil. Rebecca's stage in the Umbrella Chronicles, Nightmare, has her cooperating with Richard until he's bitten by the yawn. This stage ends with her and Richard waiting outside the attic of the mansion for help, set in the stage for Chris to discover them in Resident Evil. I still think that Barry is canon as well, mind. I'd like to think that both Chris's and Jill scenarios are both canon, and Barry, Jill, Rebecca, and Chris escaped on the chopper together. That's what I think, anyway. But Resident Evil Zero definitely, you know, Rebecca's canon. There's no question about that. Um, also, some of the monsters. Obviously, the zombies are, you know, humans infected by the T-Virus. Cerberus are dogs infected by the T-Virus. The vines in the room where you have to use the earth or the chemical on the water system to poison them and kill them. And Plant 42 are obviously plants. The actual sharks are great whites. I think. Canon, they're great whites. Don't quote me on that. They're infected with the T-Virus. The chimeras I mentioned in the ending of Jill's scenario are human, you know, eggs fertilized or mixed with fly DNA and inserted into human females to give birth to, which is horrible. Tyrant is a bioweapon that's been, you know, genetically and artificially grown. Uh, Yawn is obviously a giant snake. I don't know what type of snake it is. I should look that up. It is poisonous. I'm not sure what snake that is. I guess I should have looked that up, shouldn't I? What other enemies are there? None that I can think of. Anyway, that'll be the last video for Resident Evil. That's going to be the bonus video. Um. How should I sum it up? Chris's alternate costume is much better than Jill's, but Jill gets a rocket launcher. Jill's scenario was by far the most easy, regardless of her health. Um, Chris can raise his gun faster than Jill, and I think there's a slightly shorter delay between shots with a handgun. But all of Jill's enemies, specifically the zombies, take like half the amount of bullets. Chris's, uh, in Chris's scenario, all the zombies seem to get back up at least once, and they take around you know between seven and nine bullets each. 
It's a shame we didn't get the infinite ammo weapon with Chris, but Chris's scenario was a lot harder. We probably could have got here if we were a bit quicker, but you know. Well, the next videos will be uploaded in the following, maybe not the following days because I'm going to be busy the next couple of days, but expect Resident Evil 2 to start soon. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do Leon A. Clay B first or, um, what did you say, Clay A. Leon B or Leon A. Clay B. But I think at the end of every series I'll make a little video like this showing off the ultimate costumes if I unlock them. And just going over the canon of the enemies, you know, and the plot points. So, thank you for watching the series. I hope you're, you'll stay with me for Resident Evil 2. Genuinely, generally, you know, grateful and appreciative for you watching. Give me the time of day. You know, I know there's a lot of other YouTubers out there who do similar content. And I appreciate you watching mine. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. I've been Scope Tactics, and I'll see you in Resident Evil 2. Goodbye.